Hi, I'm Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm here today to talk about the upcoming lunar eclipse, which is taking place on the 25th of March. Now, what I aim to do with these videos is to pull out some of the key themes of these astrological events using traditional astrology along with fixed star galactic astrology so that we can really start to understand some of the cosmic energies that are working to support us through this time that we are moving through. So um, if you are interested in astrology and galactic astrology, please do check out my website spiralbright.co.uk and I also have a mailing list for a monthly newsletter that I send out just to highlight the key events that lie ahead. So let's talk about this eclipse. It is taking place at five degrees, seven minutes of Libra. So the moon will be in Libra and the sun in the opposing sign of Aries. Now, this is a south node eclipse because the south node is in Libra. And so it's taking place on the axis of relating and relationships. Now, whenever there is an eclipse, and we do have a number of these each year, it is effectively an opportunity to have a reset. Something is eclipsed. There is a temporary absence of light. And what that creates is the opportunity for us to really see the shadow, to see what has been buried. And whenever we're talking about a full moon eclipse, which is the end of a cycle, so it's very much linked to endings, to closure, to letting go, to release. But full moons in particular are incredibly emotional times. So this is a time when our unconscious feelings and emotions can rise up to the surface to be seen, to be witnessed, to be acknowledged. And anything that we've sort of kept deeply buried and hidden, either consciously or unintentionally, that is also coming up to be reviewed and to be um, to be processed. So eclipses also create um, sort of deep and sudden and unexpected change. We can have events coming out of left field that we just didn't see coming. They act as wild cards, as reset points. And it often sort of, if we think we're on one path and we think we're heading in one direction, we can get pushed completely in a totally different direction. And because we are looking at um, this eclipse in the air sign of Libra, that is likely to um, include a change not only of our sort of action and what we're doing, but also a change of mindset and change of understanding as air represents the mind and our thought patterns and how we see the world, how we perceive the world. Um, air is also linked to frequency and to energy. So again, we may find that this is a time where we're going to experience a shift in the frequency potentially. And I will be talking about the other parts in the chart that may support that and encourage that. But ultimately, you know, it's a time when we can break patterns and um, when we can sort of have a complete shift, change of gear, and we have this cosmic universal support to do so. So where we might have sort of become stuck in our ways and set in our comfort zones, this is an opportunity to really make a change and to break out of that. Now, because we are dealing with a south node eclipse and the south node is moving through Libra at this time, um, that brings to the forefront, to this um, surface, where we may have been sort of stuck in a comfort zone, where we've become stagnant and unable to sort of move forward and experience growth. So this is likely to bring up in situations and experiences that we have outgrown, where we have become sort of not, not blocked necessarily, but there's there's no sort of further opportunity for growth in these particular areas of our life. And south node eclipses are very karmic. 
They are about endings. They are about letting go of what is no longer serving us. And if there are any sort of situations that have um, sort of run their course, taught us all that they needed to, and we've got as much as possible that we can out of them in terms of our soul evolution, then it is time for those to be removed. And this eclipse is really going to help that happen. And um, when we're talking about the South Node in Libra, we will be looking at the sort of lower expressions of the Libran energy. So if there are situations where we are codependent or in unhealthy situations or relationships with people, and um, then that is likely to be coming to an end. And again, that can be abrupt, it can be unexpected, or it can be a slow, ongoing, but steady process. But absolutely this time, and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling that, you know, things are changing, certainly with regard to relationships that they have with certain people in their lives. Libra also is about arrangements and agreements that we have with people in situations. So again, if you, you know, have been doing something a certain way because it's something that you agreed and honoured to do, but it's no longer sort of supporting you, it's no longer in your highest and best interest and highest good, then again, these agreements and arrangements are likely to come to an end. Libra can also, in its lower expression, encourage people pleasing because often we want to keep the peace, we don't want to rock the boat, we don't want to cause conflict or offend people or put people out. So we agree to carry on doing things in a certain way just to keep the peace. Again, if that is the case, then it's likely to be um, sort of changing and shifting at this time. And as Libra also rules contracts, again, this can be formal legal contracts, but it can also relate to past life contracts where, again, you've brought something through to work on, to learn from, to experience in this lifetime. But at this point in our evolution and in our growth and in our ascension, a lot of contracts are coming to an end because we have learned what we needed to learn from them. And it is time to release them, to let them go so that we can move forward. So really anywhere where you are being held back, where there is something preventing or restricting or limiting your growth, this is a time where that is likely to be addressed. And we're going to find that where we may have um, sort of been ignoring situations or there's been issues that you know, we've maybe not even seen before, that is going to be exposed, it's going to be seen because this is the shadow that is revealed when the eclipse takes place. So it's going to be really hard to ignore certain things in our lives sort of from this point on. Libra is also serves as a mirror because when we're working with Libra energy, we are experiencing our world through other people. This is the world outside of ourselves and it's how we experience our world and how we understand our world through other people. So where there may be situations where other people or, or other um, setup structures are influencing us or even coercing, manipulating, controlling us, then again, because this isn't necessarily, well, I would say definitely not for our greatest and highest good, that is likely to come to an end. And where we have unhealthy attachment situations or people, again, we're going to be encouraged, potentially forced to really look at that um, without filter, you know, in the cold light of day, potentially, because again, these situations cannot be allowed to continue if we are to step into a higher level of consciousness and awareness. I'm also feeling that where before, you know, we've, we live very much in a polarised society and the invitation to choose a side, to pick a side, to have an opinion that maybe opposes someone else's opinion is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I feel that with the Libra energy and the full moon and the sun shining its light on this Libra full moon, we're going to be invited to find the middle ground, to find that point of peace, that 
point of stillness where we're not being pulled in one direction or another, having to choose sides. This is very much about finding that middle ground and standing in our authentic, empowered sovereignty as we really um, try to embody the Aries energy where the sun is shining its um, highest light. So if there are conditioning, patterning, programming, perhaps that has been affecting us, influencing us, preventing us from being authentic and sovereign and self-empowered, then again, this is a time when we're likely to see that coming to an end, being dissolved, being removed. Anything that restricts our growth is up to be destroyed and uncreated. And we're going to be invited to see both sides of a story, of a picture, of a situation, rather than maybe being um, sort of encouraged to look one way but not the other. This full moon is going to open up the playing field so that we can actually see everything that is going on and the galactic astrology supports that really well. The other thing I just wanted to mention because it came through quite strongly was that obviously with Libra where we're experiencing um, the, our world and our existence through other people that of, often brings growth, it brings amazing opportunities, often challenges but with Libra there can be a sense of needing to compare or wanting to compare ourselves to other people, of always thinking that other people are better than us um, and that somehow you know we are not good enough which is very much Chiron in Aries energy which is strong at the moment but with this full moon we're invited to see what makes us unique what makes what makes us special what makes us individual and the unique gifts that we have to bring so we're invited to kind of drop that um sort of comparison and competitive consciousness as well through the energies of this full moon eclipse and of course Libra is about balance it's about harmony it's about stepping away from conflict understand that sometimes conflict is needed but it is not always the best choice peace very much on the table here as long with justice and the legal system because libra is represented by the scales of justice so again we may see more stories in the media about situations where justice perhaps hasn't been served or where justice is being called for. But this is a time with, with the Sun in Aries, along with the North Node and Chiron in Aries, to really step into a much stronger understanding and sense of the self. So I'm going to talk about some of the key aspects that are taking place in the chart at the time of this full moon. But just before I do so, I just wanted to point out that the moon is at five degrees and the number five in numerology is the pivot point. It's the tipping point. It's the middle point, which really is in beautiful synergy with the themes of Libra. When we get to the five, we are at that midway point. We can see and look back to where we've come from and what we've achieved. We're also able to look ahead. And the five is also very much linked to change, but also to freedom and to adventure and to really sort of breaking out into new ground. So, you know, this is very much backed up through the astrology in the chart as well. But I felt that that was really important. I believe without checking that this is actually um, one in a series of full moons all happening at five degrees as well. So again, that sort of the um, theme of change is constantly coming through with all these recent full moons. So if we're looking at the chart, again, I'll just pick out the key aspects, but the moon is in a trine to Pluto. Pluto being in Aquarius, both air signs, this is an air trine. So this is really um, supporting our understanding, but also transformation and revolution of our understanding. We're going to be able to see something new with this full moon and with the Pluto activation. And Pluto is here to help us dig deep, to excavate the fears, to bring everything to the surface and to transmute it. We're going to be able to see something that was possibly hidden from us before. Again, can be personal, 
can also be collective. But Pluto wants change, is very um, prepared to push for it. But because this is a trine, it's very, very supportive and harmonious energy. So there's a lovely flow, but we're going to be able to see what has been blocked potentially and what has been holding us back. And of course, you know, this is deep work. It is not for the faint of heart and particularly anybody born between 1972 and 1975, this full moon is going to be conjunct your natal Pluto in the chart. So this is really a time for purging of deep buried fears and it's going to be very cathartic time we're having to, I say we, because that includes myself, who was born in 1973, we're having to face some shadow and some fears and some deep emotions, but also we're having to really face and look at our real true self, sort of square in the eye without filtering it through other people and other experiences. It's about stripping, stripping back all that perhaps isn't authentic about the way we've been living or the way we've been behaving and coming back to the core true essence of self. Obviously this applies to everybody because Pluto is in a trine to the moon but in particular for um, people born around the same time as myself this, this is a powerful one. But ultimately you know Pluto is not here to mess around um, but Pluto also wants us to grow and to evolve. So really supportive energy there. We have this building conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus, which will be exact in April, but it is getting closer and the energy is increasing. And this for me is very much about a jump or quantum leap in consciousness, huge amounts of awakening, frequency, lightning bolts, energy, light codes coming through to wake us up, give us a jolt and um, sort of break through where we've become stuck, where we've become fixed, where we've become stagnant through that fixed earth sign of Taurus. And it's also very strong energy of revolution and rebellion and freedom, sort of setting um, our, our minds free from where we have been held um, possibly captive or certainly restricted in some way. So that is really powerful energy building in the background. We also have Lilith in Virgo in a trine to Uranus. And, you know, Lilith is really the feminine archetype. She represents independence. She wants freedom. She is very much about, um, as confronting our shadow, our darker aspects, perhaps where we feel shame, where we felt rejected. And if anything that has been concealed, either deliberately from ourselves or from other people outside of ourselves or other situations that again, with this trine, there is this huge sort of awakening and opportunity to see that and to get freedom from where we have been held back and repressed. So if there's anything that has held us back from living our full potential, this is likely to be seen to be revealed. And, you know, it could be quite shocking. And there's certainly going to be some level of uproar and upstanding as people start to really assert their rights. Now, along with this, we've got Mercury is very active because Mercury is conjunct Eris. And again, Eris is the warrior. Eris will stand up for anybody that is not included, anybody that is sort of um, ostracized from society, any levels of injustice, Eris will stand up. And when Mercury is standing next to her, this really is a time for people to find their voices and to speak out and perhaps you know even people that maybe again were keeping things you know easy didn't want to rock the boat you know very much that sort of Libra south node energy where it's nice and comfortable here so we're not going to make a fuss Mercury coming into contact with Eris it's going to be quite difficult to stay silent. That's kind of the feeling I'm getting. And with the North Node in, in its conjunction still with Chiron, which is our deepest wound, again, all these four planets 
in an asteroid in the sign of Aries, which is all about the self, speaking out for who we are, speaking up as individuals, as unique sovereign beings. With the North Node pushing us forward, this is part of our destiny, but we have wounds to heal in this area before we can actually grow and fully evolve. So again, some really strong energy there. We also have the lunations ruling planet Venus, which is in Pisces, has just had a conjunction with Saturn. Venus is very much about relationships, what we value, our sense of self-worth in this world. And Saturn is about mastery. It's about maturity, also about limitations and restrictions, but where we are called to really step into a more mature version of self and existence and being but also you know we are being called to take responsibility for our relationships for what we value and come to a new level of maturity in how we interact with other people so again, this can mean some situations, some relationships are ending, but some may just be shifting into a higher gear, into a more positive expression, into the right relationship. And with Pisces energy, although this is karmic, it is also deeply intuitive, deeply creative, highly compassionate. So, you know, we have these beautiful and ethereal flowing energies to support us in this work. And we are very much with Pisces invited to have faith at this time. So that's a snapshot of the traditional astrology. Again, the main ones, there are many others that I could talk about, but I'm just going to pull out some of the key fixed star galactic influences as well. Now, one of the biggest ones is the fact that this moon, this eclipse is conjunct at the super galactic center at two degrees of Libra. And I have done a video about the cosmic points very recently, so I will share the link to that below where I explain in much more de depth how these super um how these cosmic points sort of behave and how they're be, being activated this year but the super galactic center acts as a great big powerful black hole and really pulls everything towards it either to be transmuted and alchemized or destroyed if it's no longer sort of serving our greatest good and the supergalactic center really pushes at us and creates this inner need to experience everything sort of beyond, to push us beyond, to be more, to experience more, to know more. So it is, it's very powerful, it's very magnetic, but ultimately it is ensuring and lending cosmic support to this eclipse to make sure that anything that has had its day that we've outgrown is removed and that that is sort of being transmuted and transformed where it is for our greatest good. Now we have some very strong Andromedan activations in the chart as well with Jupiter in a conjunction to Almac and the North Node conjunct Alpharats. Now, whenever there is strong Andromedan energy, we are invited to step out beyond our sphere of existence and our reality into you know the other galaxies beyond and the themes of the andromedan fixed stars are very much linked to transformation to freedom freedom is very important but there is also this idea that with when andromedan energy is strong we cannot Sort of find a stable base we have to be able to adapt and to shape shift and to merge and sort of, um, change our energies according to the situation and these conjunctions with the andromedan stars are really going to help us to do that and we are going to need to be able to do that at this time because it's going to be hard with so much change happening and so much higher frequencies coming through it's going to be hard to cling on to what we've sort of have always known we have to let go because we have to be able to embrace this change 
and you know whenever you do hold on to something too tightly you create resistance and disease and discomfort and I would sort of really suggest at this time where possible and it's not easy because humans really do struggle with change try not to hold on to something if it is being removed or if it is dissolving or if it is coming to an end because you will create that resistance and if you are able to let go and go with the flow and surrender and sort of trust that everything is happening for your greatest good, you allow that to be re- whatever is being removed will be replaced by something much better for you that is here to serve you in higher and greater ways. So pl- please do try not to hold on too hard um, because it will be futile, unfortunately, uh, as we do move through this period of massive change. Um, I'll... Andromeda is also very much about higher consciousness and wisdom coming through. So again, you know, we have that connection, Jupiter expanding that for us, the North Nodes of saying this is the way we need to go. This is the kind of um, levels of consciousness that we need to be open to if we are going to evolve. So that's very, um, very supportive, but ultimately all about transformation. We have Mercury is very active. Mercury being in an opposition to Arcturus, which is one of the fixed stars that we associate very strongly with deep emotional healing. And the Arcturians are very much overseeing our ascension process. They want to support us. They want to work with us. And they have got access to very sort of futuristic forms and modalities of technology for healing. So again, you know, this is Mercury is about our mind and our message and our understanding. So, you know, for some, it may mean that there are Arcturian messages and information coming through. For others, it's just this access to a different mindset, but also emotional healing for our minds, for our understanding. And Mercury is also in a trine to two stars, Ophicius and Alphard, which are both stars that we associate with the divine feminine and also serpent energy. And of course, serpent energy is all about shedding layers of skin in order to transform and to regenerate. And while we're on this theme, which seems to be a constant in this chart, we also have Venus in a conjunction to one of the Phoenici- the Phoenix or Phoenicius, Phoenicius stars anchor. And this brings again through the Phoenix energy, which is all about, of course, burning everything away so that something beautiful can be reborn from the ashes. And the other star that Venus is conjunct to at this time is Arcanar in the Eridanus constellation. So this is the river constellation in our skies. So again, an invitation to go with the flow, just to kind of go down the river, the river being a metaphor for a spiritual journey in life, very much linked to the free spirit, the elemental beings, to spiritual expansion. And it's also said that the Arcanar beings are very much um, here to support us in negating corruption in our world and releasing us from mind control. So again, there's a really beautiful synergy and connection there with the lower expression of Libra, where we may have become codependent or overly influenced on external um, forces and situations. Just finally, I could go on forever, but this I'm just going to say this final one. Pluto is in an ongoing conjunction to Aquila, which is the eagle constellation. So Aquila, Altair, bringing courage, courage to transform and the ability to rise higher, to see the bigger picture, to be able to see things from a different perspective and see things that perhaps we have not seen before. So again, there's that beautiful um, sort of transformative energy coming through. And Pluto is also in its ongoing trine to the supergalactic centre and square the Shapley attractor, which is all about truth and the masks falling and being able to see what lies beneath the surface so that we can have a much more honest and realistic picture of what is going on. So there is a lot 
happening with this eclipse. And of course, 14 days later, we're going to have the solar, the total solar eclipse in Aries, which is even more powerful. But I will leave it there for now. I hope you found that interesting. Please, you know, feel free to comment. Please feel free to share if you know other people that would be interested in this sort of content. And thank you for being here. I'm really grateful to everybody that finds my channel, who subscribes, who likes the content and the videos. And um, yeah, it's yeah, it's a pleasure to be sharing sort of my insight and my thoughts with um, with you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Thank you.